colonial regime has been replaced by the present religious regime of an increasing Islamization of the state. So the key word here in the negotiation of space is the is Islamizing state. This new regime is more overtly interested in the control of religious orthodoxy, particularly of the public visibility of religions other than Islam. As we shall see in the case of Hinduism and Chinese religions, we'll see in the afternoon, uh, later on in the afternoon, the institutionalized legitimacy of religions that are not religions of the book, that is non-Abrahamic religions, is an especially contentious subject. In general, the migration regime of today also does not, as a rule, permit localizing or settlement. Contemporary immigrants, almost without exception, cannot engage in public religious placemaking. They have to seek existing, their existing religious institutions, places of worship. For example, Indonesian workers um, go to the um, United Methodist Church. Mosque? No, UKM, church, mosque. National, exactly, for Friday prayers. And Nigerian students go to the Assemblies of God. Um, so the present religious regime, therefore, has transformed the dynamics of public religious placemaking for the existing non-Muslim communities of faith. Given the tremendous growth in size of the urban population, especially in the last three decades, the demand for new sites of worship and burial has grown exponentially for all faiths across the board. And there's a form of bu uh, bureaucracy at the state and national level to regulate the Islamic faith. But there's no legal framework, however, for establishing and managing the regulation of non-Islamic affairs. As a result, land for sites of worship and burial that fall under the planning regulations of the state has not been allocated for new religious minorities. The overall effect of the new religious regime in Kuala Lumpur is to limit the space for institutional expression of collective religious activity among immigrant minorities, migrant minorities, making all standing temples more central and thus increasing the status and prestige of leaders who run and maintain them. At the same time, we have an upward mobile class of second and uh, third generation immigrants who have found ways to generate alternative public spaces, religious spaces, that escape the limitations imposed by Islamization. Finally, migrant minorities have come to rely on temporary public displays, such as processions, marches, annual festivals, to mark their collective religious identity and generate what Durkheim would call collective religious effervescence. <laughs>